Hi guys. On today's video, I'm going to take you guys to go and explore the largest city in the Mekong Delta, Gunta City, which is world renowned for its floating market and hospitality. Gunta City is located about a 3.5 to 4 hour drive from Ho Chi Minh City. The easiest way to get there is by taking a sleeper bus. These buses are cheap and, well, they're just cheap. Don't expect world class service on these buses, and prepare to endure hours of Vietnamese karaoke music being blasted on the speakers during the entire trip. In the unfortunate event that you happen to be 6 foot or taller, then congratulations because you get to experience what it feels like to be a sardine jam packed into a tin can as your legs are much too long to fully stretch out on the beds that were designed with a shorter person in mind. Instead. You'll be feeling leg pain and cramps every hour or so on the bus and want to stick them out in front of you to relieve the pain. The only problem is, the person sitting in front of you is not going to enjoy the foul smell of your feet in their face. But there's another option. You can book a semi-private van and set to head down to Gunta City. There are only about 7 or 8 seats available on this van and the seats are much wider and comfortable compared to the sleeper buses. Plus, you can stretch your feet out too and not run the risk of developing deep vein thrombosis and potentially killing yourself due to blood clots forming from insufficient blood flow to your legs while sitting in cramped confined spaces for long periods of time. As a bonus, the tickets usually cost around the same if not only slightly more. I highly recommend this option instead. On the way to Gunta City, the driver will make a rest stop at one of these large bus stops packed with restrooms, snacks, and a couple of food options as well in case you get hungry. Also make sure not to come here during the rainy season. You'll be swimming every day instead. I made this mistake on this trip here. It was pouring on the way to the city and continued for the rest of the day while I was there. After you arrive at Gunta, why not check out the local wet market where you can buy only the freshest of ingredients. There's poultry, fish, fruits, vegetables, and all sorts of herbs to be found here. It doesn't get any more fresher than this here folks. But make sure to get up bright and early if you want to check out the wet market here. They were closed by the time I had arrived here. Ah, life in Gunta. It looks so exciting now, doesn't it? When I visited the city, it looked kind of dead. Barely a soul out on the streets. A stark contrast to Saigon, where people are honking their horns non-stop and driving all over the place. One of the main draws of living here in Gunta is that people don't try to run you over when you're crossing the street, unlike in Saigon. Look! I even managed to make it across the street without anyone trying to cut me off. Isn't that great? Now you don't have to fear for your life when you're crossing the street. When coming here, don't forget to try some of the famous local delicacies such as fried elephant ear fish that's served with rice paper, fresh herbs, and vegetables that's dipped in a tangy sweet sauce. This was by far one of my favorite dishes here. There's also grilled pork skewers that you can get as well called Nam Noon that are also served with rice paper, veggies and a dark peanut sauce. The city is pretty much surrounded by water. So why not take advantage of this and go for a nice swim in the beautiful Mekong River where the water is fresh, clean and completely safe to swim in. There's also a distinct musky smell to the river here in Gunta City that gives the river its unique charm. Now over here we got the Gunta Market, which is similar to the Buntun Market in Saigon, except without the pickpockets. There's tons of souvenir stores here and a restaurant. And of course, your typical employees sleeping on the job. If you really want to stand out as a tourist, then come on down here and pick up a few souvenir t-shirts that say, I love Vietnam. Now if you get bored of Gunto Market, well then just head outside to the Gunto Night Market. 
where you can buy delicious and mouth-watering street food. But don't come here until sunset, otherwise most of the vendors will be closed. At the night market, you'll find a combination of grilled skewers, finger foods, desserts, pastries, and even bread. This looks very hygienic by the way. There's also a bunch of booths that sell your typical low quality made in China touristy stuff like t-shirts and shoes just outside the night market. And now we head on over to the Gantou Pedestrian Bridge, also known as the Love Bridge, where couples love to go hang out on dates and admire the light spectacle in the evenings. It's the ultimate date spot over here if you're looking to wow a girl. This bridge reminds me of the Starlight Bridge over in Saigon. Now if you're sensitive to flashing lights though, then I don't recommend you come to this bridge at night. Otherwise you run the risk of going into a photosensitive epileptic seizure. But there is one attraction that stands out above everything else here and that's the floating market. Over here you can experience what life is all about being stuck on a ship and dealing with annoying tourists all day. For only about 15 US dollars, you can book yourself a private boat tour of the floating market. But don't worry, if you can't afford a $15 boat ride, there's also dirt cheap group tours for only $2. The perfect option for those penny pitching backpackers out there. And here we got the boat. No wait, I lied. This is the real one. Here's a tip. When you book a boat here, try to get one with a tarp covering the roof. Unless of course you want to be soaked to the brim with rainwater. Now I do hope you guys are early birds, because these floating market tours start early, real early. 5am to be exact. And now we get to the highlight of the trip. The floating market. My lenses were fogging up like crazy here. It takes about 50 minutes of sitting on the boat and watching the sunrise before you actually do arrive at the floating market. The sunrise was beautiful and very peaceful despite being on a motorboat. However, once you arrive at the floating market, things really pick up and now you feel like you're in the middle of a dogfight as boats zip by you left and right and tourists are seen everywhere snapping photos and ignoring everyone. Maybe that's why I didn't see a single soul smile while on camera. Surprisingly, no one even bothered to hail me to buy anything. I thought these people depended on tourism. Now, if you do get bored, you can always climb aboard a boat and take selfies with people like these two girls right here.
but based on what I saw previously on YouTube, I expected a lot more boats selling food and drinks out at sea here. But for some reason or another, there were barely any vendors out today. Maybe they all went away on vacation during the rainy season, or maybe they were still asleep. It was after all, around 6am in the morning when I was here. Who knows? After driving around the floating market for what seemed like 15 long minutes and seeing the same boats again and again, I felt let down. Where were all the friendly people that were supposed to be shoving fruits and vegetables in my face, or asking me if I was hungry or thirsty? They definitely weren't hustling very hard this morning. The only types of boats that I really saw selling stuff were the boats filled with watermelons. You literally would see a boat selling watermelons every minute or two here. My driver did eventually find me a restaurant out at sea after driving around for 20 long minutes trying to find me something to eat. As soon as I set my ass down, I pointed to a bowl of bong ryu. Bong ryu is a famous Vietnamese dish that consists of vermicelli noodles that are housed in a hot, delicious crab broth served with crab meat, Vietnamese ham, other cuts of meats, and loads of tomatoes and veggies. Now despite the high chances of catching diarrhea from eating food cooked from a boat with questionable hygienic practices, I decided to take the plunge. I was starving at this point. It was either this noodle shop right here, or five watermelons from that grumpy looking woman out on the boat there. And in case you're wondering whether or not I did end up getting a bad case of diarrhea, well, I did. Just kidding. It's completely safe to eat out at sea here. But in case you do catch anything, I'm not responsible. After breakfast was done, we continued on the journey into the unknown. And it just so happens that it started to pour. See? I told you to take a bigger boat. I knew that roof would come in handy. And now our next stop? A gift shop. You gotta be kidding me. I traveled hundreds of miles to come to Guntoa City and the driver drops me off at a gift shop. How cliche. Okay, let's get out of here quickly before I end up buying something at overinflated prices. Ah shit. Alright, it's back to the boat now. Let's see where else we're going next. I hope it's not another tourist trap. Ah shit. Another one? Looks like I fell for it again. Let's get out of here and visit our next destination. Now over here, we got a fried rice noodle factory where you can buy fresh store made rice noodles and take selfies behind a dirty store counter. How cool is that? You also get to watch some poor woman wearing five layers of clothing frying shit all day while earning two bucks an hour. And you thought you had it bad at your job. Now a disclaimer though, I was in Guntoa city for only a few days and I am in no shape or form an expert on the city. I'm sure there are lots of other great places and hidden gyms that I did not get the chance to discover due to time constraints. If you've been here for a while now or currently live here, let me know what other great places I missed out on. Or if you would like me to come back here again in the future to do a more in depth video, comment below and let me know.
Well, this wraps up the video guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel and comment below with any questions you may have about the video or any suggestions for future videos. See you guys again next time on VidQ Dating.